On today's video, we're gonna be going over the top 10 must know things when choosing a master plan community. Whether you're searching for the perfect amenities, considering various housing options, or evaluating the location and accessibility, I've got you covered. We'll also touch on important aspects like community design, lifestyle and culture, and sustainability. Plus, we'll also explore financial considerations, educational facilities, and health and wellness resources. By the end of this video, you'll have a comprehensive understanding of what to look for in a master plan community to ensure it meets your needs and long-term goals for you and your family. Stay tuned as we break down these top 10 factors to help you make the best decision for your new home purchase. Uh, so that makes sense. Howdy y'all, welcome back to another video today. We are gonna be going over the top 10 things you should be looking for when it comes to a master plan community and choosing which one is the best for you and your family. These are some of the things that I look for when also helping my clients kind of choose and pick between different ones. Now there's all different types of buyers. Some people want the big grand master plan communities. Some people really just want to be on an acre of land and be surrounded by maybe 20 other neighbors and have no other amenities. So there's a wide range of things that the North Texas market has to offer. Different types of neighborhoods across the boards, different types of builders, different types of lots and amenities throughout we're actually over here in the grove today we're driving through one of the most popular top popular one i would say i mean it's got to be probably within the top three that come through my channel for asking questions and people trying to get more information about this neighborhood over here which is located on the east side of frisco up along highway 121 so just a little bit of information about the grove really big master plan community tons of amenities they're actually bringing another phase into the north side of main street so this is built out pretty good right now but just know there is going to be more availability and there's still availability right now with this neighborhood but all different types of builds within here they're also going to have townhomes there's an apartment complex you got these 60 foot lots bigger lots here and there but uh, we're going to drive around kind of the older part of the neighborhood because they are just starting Starting on their next phase and not too much is done over there so we're just going to kind of keep it to this other side for today but i'm going to get into the top 10 things you should be looking at and these aren't really going to be in order i just kind of listed them out although i do think this first one is probably like the number one thing you should be looking at when it comes to master plan communities is the amenities and the facilities that the community is going to offer such as swimming pools parks, playgrounds, sport courts, tennis, basketball. You see a lot of neighborhoods starting to do like pickleball courts or some sand volleyball as well. And then also fitness centers. These amenities can enhance your lifestyle and provide ample opportunities for like leisure and exercise and just kind of being able to get out of the house and go do some things. Also, not only just like looking for maybe fitness centers, but also just community centers. So you can look for well-equipped clubhouses, meeting rooms, event spaces, activity centers, where you know your neighbors, your residents can gather for social events, meetings, activities. And these centers can foster like a sense of community and provide spaces for organized activities. So you are gonna have some of these neighborhoods where it's just maybe a fitness center, that's really it. But then you're also gonna have some other neighborhoods in these mass bank communities where they have their own separate clubhouses where maybe you could host a birthday party or maybe a sports team party for your children or maybe just a kind of a clubhouse meeting fun thing to do that the lifestyle director is putting on so not just the fitness centers or areas to kind of like hang around and be at with the pools and stuff but there's also some other clubhouses grilling areas outside lawn spaces and event spaces too and that leads me to the next one which is green spaces and really just evaluate the availability of walking trails and nature reserves gardens see how well maintained the landscaping is you know you want ample green spaces you know through your master plan community because it really does contribute to the aesthetic of it and kind of provides a little bit more of a serene environment for outdoor activities and just relaxation right you have some of these communities where they just put like a small playground in the fitness center but there's nothing really else to walk around and kind of get out it's just a whole bunch of houses so it is really nice when you have some of these neighborhoods put in these green spaces where you can have like maybe a dog park is thrown in there as well things like that that you can kind of hang around and it's not just like a fitness center or anything or a playground there's a little bit more things to it and i do like it when they kind of keep tree lines and things kind of like this up here 
on this space. So this isn't really like an event area, but it's a small playground, but you can see there's a bit of green spaces around here. Got some nice tree lines and some walking trails going around. You got these people right here, these people, one person and two dogs, but aren't dogs people, you know? I'm one to believe that dogs have the same rights as humans, but I don't know about cats. I don't know about cats. I grew up with cats, so many cats as a kid. I can't, I'm traumatized by the cats. I'm just traumatized. Either way, you might have dog parks, things like that within some of these green spaces too, to be able to kind of hang out and play around. The second thing to look at is going to be housing options. So there's gonna be a variety of homes within the neighborhood. You're gonna wanna assess the range of housing options available, including single family homes, townhomes, condos. A diverse selection ensures that you can find a home that fits your needs in your budget. However, just kind of keep in mind with these master plan communities, you are gonna have some apartment complexes with them or on the outside of them. I think townhomes are fine, right? But when it comes to apartment complexes, you gotta just kind of think there's a little bit more shenanigans that come with apartment complexes rather than townhomes. Apartment complexes usually bring the shenanigans. You got a lot more tenants in these areas, which can just lead maybe to more problems if you're right around that area. So if you are looking at a master plan community, kind of figure out A, does it already have an apartment complex on site? Or B, is the developer going to bring an apartment complex on site? Because you can see these townhomes here are right across the street from an apartment complex. And so are some of these 40 foot lots. For me personally, I would try to be a little bit further away from the apartment complex and not right by it just for resale value. It could end up hurting your resale value being across the street from an apartment complex. And when you're looking at housing options, also look at the architectural styles, right? Consider the variety of architectural designs and customization options offered. Diverse styles can cater to different tastes and preferences, allowing for more personalized living experiences. You have some of these neighborhoods where they'll allow you to change up different elevations. You know, usually in these neighborhoods too, they're doing a pretty good job not making every house look like each other but I already know I'm gonna get ahead of the comments right now I know there's a handful of you that go through these master plan communities and you're gonna go to your you're gonna go to your keyboard right now and be like these are all cookie cutter homes they all look the same right through a neighborhood like this I don't believe they all look the same I think these houses are laid out a lot better with their elevations now you start going into these master plan communities made by maybe the developer Century on American Development Group, DR Horton neighborhoods, Megatel neighborhoods, some of those other builders, KB Homes. Then you start getting into like the whole, these houses all looking similar, but if you can kind of stick to neighborhoods that have maybe Highland Homes, American Legend, Tradition Homes, Perry Homes, Britain Homes, uh, Partners in Building, Huntington Homes, Darling Homes. Some of those builders in there, I think they offer a better, selection of elevations and different things. But like I was saying, the HOAs will do a pretty good job making sure that nothing really repeats. You have some neighborhoods also where, you know, they will have certain restrictions on what you can do. For example, you have some where the developer won't allow mailboxes. They won't allow three car garages from the front to give a better aesthetic. So definitely drive through the neighborhood, see what the current houses look like. You're not always able to do that because some of these master plan communities are brand spanking new, but that's one thing to kind of look at at the architectural style. I will say there is better value in the house that all kind of laid out differently and kind of have a little bit more character to them rather than the neighborhoods that do uh, that are a little bit more cookie cutter where all the bricks are the same colors or maybe they just have two different varieties with them and that leads me to the next point for housing options which is quality of construction okay research the builders do your own due diligence you're already doing a pretty good job doing your due diligence right now watching this video so i appreciate that thanks for clicking on this one today i'm sure you're kind of trying to um, figure some things out and get some questions answered but definitely do your due diligence i will say this it is a huge red flag if you are looking at a builder and they don't have any type of marketing they don't have an instagram account they don't have any google reviews they barely even have a website if you're coming across those types of builders i would say that's a red flag also there's one little thing I'll give you, one little piece of advice maybe, or one little, uh, what do I wanna say here, like one little thingamabobber, you know? When you go to these houses and you look through them, the way I can immediately distinguish, I mean, I can kind of dis distinguish things off the name of the builder, but I will say this, if you go into a build and the 
garage is not finished out and it just has like the taping and you know they didn't actually paint the walls that's probably a lower end builder that likes to cut a little bit more corners than the other ones. And I'm not gonna say every builder that finishes out the garages is 100% amazing, perfect, the best quality, but that's a good starting point to look at. And just look at Google reviews, right? At the end of the day, the high quality construction can lead to fewer maintenance issues and you know a longer lasting home for you and less problems. You also find that a higher quality builder will do things with better warranties. Maybe instead of like a six year foundation warranty, they'll do a 10 year foundation warranty. But I've also ran into some situations where it'll still be a good builder uh, for what I think uh, for quality but sometimes i will find you know a higher quality build but they are still doing a six-year foundation but that's kind of one of those things to look into the warranties and then also just you know get your third-party inspections even the top rated production builders that i do builds on with my clients nothing's perfect every new construction home that i've built out with a family has had some problems with it. However, how those problems are addressed are different between all the builders. You have some builders that will just write a blank check for the problems. For example, you might not like the countertops, maybe something got lost in translation at the design center, maybe they painted your house wrong, maybe they just did things along the way because there's a, you know, the sales agent and the design center is going to the builder and then the builder is going to the third party contractors and then it's just a whole, you know, it's a game of telephone at that point, right? So that might happen, you know, that that is a possibility with, with things, right? I have seen this happen, but how it's handled afterwards by the builders and what they do, every builder is going to be different so you definitely want to look at the reviews with everything third thing you're going to want to look at is location and accessibility for this you're going to want to see the proximity to work and schools evaluate the community's distance from major employment centers and the quality of local schools around it short commute times and access to good schools can significantly impact your daily life and also your children's education of course so there's websites that you can go on to like greatschools.org you can look at ratings on there you can also look at the reviews under these schools and see what other families are leaving and what they're talking about but this is once again all subjective to who you are who your kid is what you want for your kid right like you might be someone that your kid is super smart so you want to put them into the stem and all the extra things that a school district is going to offer you might also have a kid that is really good at baseball or maybe not really good at baseball and you want to make sure your kid makes the baseball team so you put them into this other school district that doesn't have the best baseball team but still somewhat okay with everything that way your kid has a chance at making the team these are just some of the conversations i've ran into with families and how they're going about picking their thing Things, but that can also be a situation right and then I think the best way to figure out like employment centers and how close those things are is just to easily go on to if you're looking over in this Dallas market just see how far away the neighborhood is to the Dallas North Tollway or Preston Road these are major commuting roads or 75 highway or 121 see how close the neighborhood is to those things and if they're pretty close then most likely your commute time is going to be the best in that area just because you're closer to those major highway systems right and then you know look up the work or look up the area that you're going to be working around i think the best way to do that is google maps but do that at a time that you're going to be traveling don't look up you know how far does it take to get to dallas from frisco at 12 o'clock if you're going to be commuting at eight o'clock in the morning or 5 p.m at night right those are two different tracks i can tell you right now living in frisco my whole life to get down to dallas from frisco go out at like 12 o'clock it takes like 25 30 minutes to get down to dallas at 4 30 or 5 p.m from frisco is more like 45 minutes an hour and so that can kind of you know make you decide on different things right also you can look at public transportation so check for access to public transportation major highways general commute times to key areas good transportation links can really cut down on that travel time there are some cities around this North Texas area, however, that don't have any public transportation. So around the Frisco area, you're not gonna really see a bus system. You're not gonna see any of those things. What you are gonna see is more highway systems going through it, but not any bus systems. However, if you just went south down to Plano, which is the next city below Frisco, when you're going south, you're gonna see the DART train, public buses, more biking routes, 
for people down around that area. So if that's important to you, you know, definitely look into the city and what their public transportation is. But Frisco, Prosper, Salina, all these areas around here, uh, when you go further north of 121, you're not really gonna find the public buses uh, going around for people and helping them out. Also, when you're looking at the location to these areas, make sure that you look at the nearby services. So consider the proximity of shopping centers, healthcare facilities, restaurants, entertainment options. You know, having these essential services nearby can also enhance the convenience and quality of your life around here, right? So, you know, if you immediately need to get to an emergency room, you're not having to drive 25 minutes. You know, you've already done your research. You know that the nearest emergency room is about five minutes away. Maybe you have an older parent or person living with you that needs some more assistance, uh, has doctor's appointments and things like that. So maybe you want to be nearby the hospital system, or maybe you want to be walking distance from the grocery store. Some of these master plan communities are going to be along some of these major roads like Preston or Dallas Parkway over in these areas or 380 highway system. And that's where a majority of these shopping centers are going to be located right off of uh, because it's just easy access for people to get around. So that's for location and accessibility on what the things you should be thinking about. Number four is the community design and layout. So all these master plan communities are gonna be laid out differently. All of them are gonna have different topography. There might be one section of the neighborhood that has a bunch of retaining walls, and then there might be another section of the neighborhood that's a lot more flat, not as many retaining walls. Like you can kind of see on these homes here how they have that stairway in the front yard with the rails on it going up. You now you might be looking at the house and be like, I don't wanna put rails on the side of my house. Like, why did they choose that? Well, they didn't choose that. That's actually a code for the city, so they have to do that. But this comes back into the aesthetic. You know, maybe that does hurt your resale value later on at the end of the day you don't know what market you're going to be reselling things in so you know protecting your investment as a whole you know i'd rather have something like these lots here where there's no stairs getting up uh, to your house right it's a lot more flat just looks aesthetically better in my opinion and just review the community's master plan to ensure it has a cohesive layout and well-planned infrastructure. A well thought out design can improve the traffic flow, utility management, and overall livability. So look to see if there's gonna be power lines running into the community. Also, these master plan communities happen in multiple, multiple phases. I think the Grove has been getting built since like 2016 and we're in 2024 now. So this neighborhood's been getting built out for a long time you know if you go into a max plan community that says like they're going to be building out for the next 10 years they probably know pretty good what's going to happen for the next three to four but sometimes these sales agents and just the things they don't quite know because I've seen some master plan communities where they're only selling 50s, 60s, and 70 foot lots. And then all of a sudden they make a deal with the developer and they change a section to maybe 86 foot lots. So sometimes that can happen too. So whether or not you wanna wait for those things later on in the future uh, to happen, I've had some families that, you know, I've heard the builder saying, oh, hey, we're actually gonna be releasing bigger lots in a year from now. And then, you know, they end up waiting. And then some people already move into their house and then they, you know, they're shooting themselves in the foot because maybe they jumped onto something too soon. So definitely, you know, reach out to a real estate agent or reach out to the builder. Uh, the builder should be the most up-to-date with what's going on uh, compared to maybe an agent because they're working within that community, right? So you can reach out to them, ask them kind of what the plans are, and they can give you a community map and kind of let you know what all that's gonna look like. Also the walkability around the neighborhood. So access to pedestrian friendliness of the community. So looking for things like sidewalks, walking paths, safe crossings, high walkability can encourage a healthy lifestyle and reduce reliance on cars. So this also goes into like the amenity center and being close to that, or maybe a park or some of those areas. Some of these mass fan communities, you know, they'll put a couple amenity centers, but these communities will still be so big that you still gotta jump in your car, drive down to the amenity center, you know, park your car, and maybe there's not enough parking at the amenity center either. And sometimes these developers do a good job with that, sometimes they don't, so it's all kind of just a hit or miss how much parking is outside these amenity centers. But you might have to drive to get the get to those amenity centers. But if the neighborhood's got good walkability, if things are fairly close, you know, if they've got some of these green spaces, like this is kind of why I drove through the Grove here, because I know this community has a lot of like cool things within it. And look right here, we got the, uh, we got the boys out playing pickleball. Well, it looks like it's skins versus skins right now. Wonder who's winning. I've never played pickleball. 
but there's a little pickleball court there. So that's kind of cool. And then around this green space area is walking path, trails, you have the tree lines and things like that. So kind of just one thing to look for. I, I would say ma majority of the big masterplans are gonna have some type of walking trails. Now, whether or not they have actual tree lines or kind of that nature feel to things, uh, usually not, it's usually, you know, everything's been chopped down and they're going and replanting trees and maybe in 20 years from now this neighbor is going to look awesome with big trees but for right now it's just not going to be that way and also for community design and layout look at the safety so look at the security features of the community such as gated entrances surveillance systems and neighborhood watch programs the enhanced safety measures can provide a peace of mind to you and your family right so if you've got young kids and you want to be in something super guarded and super safe then maybe you want to find a community that is going to be gated or maybe some type of security entrance to it a lot of master planning communities this big aren't going to be fully gated there could be a section of the neighborhood that is gated for example the neighborhood over in wiley inspiration that big master plan community has a section of the community where it is gated so some of these master plan communities have it but a lot of them don't uh, they're gonna be if they're gonna be gated it's probably more likely to be like one acre lots or not too big of a community where you're gonna get the gated aspect of the community but you're not really going to get the fun amenities and all that type of stuff that a lot of people are looking for in a massive plan community but it's also dependent on kind of what's important to you and then definitely looking to see if they have a neighborhood watch or you know security going around and making sure things are staying safe so that's through like the hoa and how they handle that now that could then be reflected in the price point so if you've got a gated community and there's a security guard working there right these are all expenses at the end of the day so you're going to find higher hoas but i also find super high hoas in the neighborhoods with a ton of amenities and they don't have any gated entrance so they're all going to be different and i would say probably for something around this level of amenities for like the grove i see you know hoas anywhere from 147 to 220 a month and then townhomes can be priced at like 330 380 per month maybe cheaper maybe more expensive sometimes the townhomes also take care of front yard maintenance so that's also another thing to look at for the hoa the next one is number five which is lifestyle and community culture so see if there's activities see if there's events look for an organized community event schedule clubs and social gatherings that will help you connect with neighbors and build a sense of belonging right because you want to feel like you belong in your neighborhood and also an active community life can greatly you know enrich your full living experience and being able to not just you know go out with your family but maybe your kid meets some friends within the neighborhood and then all of a sudden you got a group of people that are all hanging out and you guys met all because you live around each other and you're going to kind of experience the things that the neighborhood has to offer also look into the demographics so consider the age diversity family friendliness and culture around the area. A diverse and inclusive community can always offer a richer social environment and cater to various lifestyles. So you have some of these neighborhoods where, you know, if there's an on-site elementary, you're probably gonna find a lot more kids and younger families, or maybe families that are just starting out, meaning two people just got married or they just got engaged and they wanna start a family. And then you have other things where maybe the master plan community will have a adult active living, right? 55 and up. You have Dell Web communities out there. And those Dell Web communities are usually attached with another part of the master plan community. So you do have a few adult active living like Ladera that has some things where it's just that builder in there building out, you know, within the community. And then you have Dell Web that might be at something like Trinity Falls over in McKinney or Union Park over in the Little Elm Aubrey area. So you might have a section of the neighborhood where it's 55 plus. And I've seen families do something where they have an older family member and they want to be in a low maintenance home, not have to worry about anything, fairly small. Maybe it's just one of them living in there. Maybe it's still two, but also being super close to the grandkids and that's just another thing that some of these master plan communities are going to offer so whether or not that kind of fits into your family dynamics you are going to have some of them that have the 55 plus active adult living within them too so just another thing to kind of research and in those 
things can come in later. So like Union Park built out their neighborhood and then later on they brought the 55 plus. So it wasn't there at the beginning, but it happened later on. So that could be a thing as well. And then you also wanna kind of look for the sense of community, evaluate the opportunities for neighborly interaction and engagement. You know, a strong sense of community can, you know, make you feel more connected and supported. At the end of the day, I'm not allowed to really go into like too many specifics about like you know if I have a buyer come in and ask me like oh who's this specific person you put under contract here what do they do for a living how old are they like all that kind of stuff I can't go into specifics I have to keep my clients information you know a little bit private but there are a few things the builder can kind of help out and then I can also kind of lead you towards and say you know things like you know usually when i'm driving around the community i see a lot younger families in there and not get into too many specifics about my clients per se but you know also mention like hey i usually see these types of people going around in the neighborhood you know younger families playing with kids okay maybe in this community you have a lot older families you have people that have been there for a long time you've got a lot more empty nesters and this is something that I think you can refer back to the Google for and look up kind of what the demographics are to kind of get a better idea of the area and if you're gonna kind of fit in with that number six is going to be looking at the sustainability and environmental considerations so you know you want to see if the neighborhood has eco-friendly practices so check for energy efficient homes sustainable landscaping and you know what the adherence is to green building standards around that city so every city is going to have different codes within them and these practices can help reduce the environmental footprint and also just lead to lower utility cost as well also you can look for conservation areas so look for natural habitats, open spaces within the community. This kind of goes back to looking at those green spaces and just how well that area was conserved. And that will just kind of also enhance the natural beauty of the area as you know these trees grow out. Sometimes they keep the trees within the neighborhoods and some of these spots that are you know a lot older, but sometimes they go into these areas and just replant a whole bunch of new things as well. Also, what is the waste management? So evaluate the community's water usage and drainage systems for efficiency and sustainability. And when you're looking at the grading and stuff, you know, you want water to flow away from the house. So something, you know, like the, this corner lot here that has, you know, a good hill going down it. You don't, you don't want the hill to be too crazy where it needs a retaining wall, really. I mean, the retaining walls on the side are fine depending on how big they are, but usually they're not too bad. So it's, it's not really a problem for me, but uh, I think a front, retaining wall at the front of the house is usually to me I don't I don't like as much it just could become another maintenance thing later on in the future that you have to deal with because really a lot of this stuff when selling real estate you know comes down to how well is the house laid out and what's the curb appeal right of course there's going to be you know what's the maintenance what's the HVAC the plumbing how's that through the home but for starters to get someone to actually come look at your house what's the layout like what's the curb appeal so like these homes with these retaining walls over on the left side i don't like those you know they're in the front of the house those retaining walls after 15 years could start really breaking down and it's on you to fix that and then you know that's just another maintenance thing that you have to deal with in the future so kind of just look at you know the water management and how things are kind of put out all of these water management systems everything's going to be laid underground of course and you're going to have differences here and there within these communities so and i'll get to that in a second with the pids and the taxes but you have some of these districts like for example over in prosper and artesia there is a specific tax within that neighborhood that is just for a fresh water system specifically for that neighborhood i think those people are paying like an extra 0.3 percent on top of their taxes within Denton County because they have a special water treatment that's going to those homes. Not every neighborhood's gonna do that. Also, not every neighborhood's gonna have a city sewer, right? They're gonna be on septic, but usually those homes that are on septic are usually one acre and they're usually not in big grand master plan communities like this. And then just look at the utilities and how power lines are being ran through, but I, I think I also already mentioned that. The number seven thing to look at 
is going to be the future growth and development. So what are the planned expansions, research any future phases and new amenities planned for the community? Knowing about upcoming developments can give you an idea on how the community will evolve and if it will meet your future needs, right? So at the beginning of a community, I like to call that the sunrise of a community. I also find that, you know, that's the best opportunity to build equity in the home as those new construction homes get more expensive. You know, that's only better for you as someone that bought right at the beginning rather than the end but then also you might be buying at the end so technically you're kind of at the top of the market buying the most expensive homes within that neighborhood but you will also be on the side of you know if you go resell that house within two to three years you might not be doing bad when reselling it if the community is already built out because you will have a lot newer of a home than something that's reselling and that's an older home you know, you may not be able to pull out as much equity as that older home, but depending on the market, it might be easier to sell that home that was built newer rather than the home that was built older that might have older problems, may not have any more warranties with it and things like that. Also look at the market trends. So investigate the property value trends and the real estate market outlook for the area. Look at how many jobs or how many headquarters and businesses or businesses going to open within those areas, right? If the businesses come in, people are wanting to live around that to cut down the commute times. So the real estate's just gonna get more expensive and have more value to it because more people are trying to get into it because they want to be around where their job is also look at what the developers reputation is so you can look at the track records of these developers right you might have a builder like normandy homes have a small master plan ish community with 200 homes and they're the developer on it right so they did the deal on that land they're not having to buy that piece of land from the developer and then that's getting put back into the price and reflected later on into the consumer right they're kind of almost eating that cost but i find that they're not really i find that they're still you know even if they're the one developing on the land the home prices are still you know very expensive but you do have some of these communities where after each phase the developer will sell at a higher price per lot to the builder and then that's reflected later on in the price point or the starting prices of the homes you might have a developer sell each lot for 80 grand and then later on going into the future into like the phase two they're selling them for like a hundred and thirty thousand dollars a piece and then you can also look at the developer's reputation on some of the previous neighborhoods that they have built the number eight thing to look at is going to be financial considerations so Look at the home prices and affordability, review the range of home prices and available financing options. And ensuring affordability and understanding the financing process can help you plan your budget effectively. And same goes with like HOA fees and property taxes and PID taxes. So, you know, understand the homeowners association fees and what they're covering. Knowing these fees can help you budget for ongoing expenses and understand the services provided. Just because you get into a community and the HOA is $100 per month, that does not mean that is it is always going to stay a hundred dollars per month it could change to two hundred dollars per month your property taxes could go up your property taxes could go down your PID annual installments could be higher one year they could be lower the next okay so these are all things that the builder will give you or if you reach out to an agent they'll also give you as well you can also access these things usually through the city's websites you know you can look at the municipality districts you can look at the PID areas and see how those are laid out and how long they're gonna last usually PIDs will last 30 40 years sometimes the mud will be a little bit quicker but these are definitely the things that you want to take into account when kind of budgeting all those things every builder is gonna have different incentives depending on the market there's gonna be different incentives depending on the lender you use there's gonna be different incentives sometimes the builder is not giving out the best financing options all right sometimes if you find a third party they're actually giving out better ones so just do the research find what lender is gonna work best for you they're all gonna give different incentives as well with how they're going about their business. So definitely do a lot of research on that side of things. And then just because you're looking at the base price, that ain't gonna be your final. So, you know, most of these master plan communities, you're, I usually see buyers spend another like 80 grand and that's including the lot premium, design, structure, elevation, you know, all those things that are gonna be pounded on top of the base price of the home. 
The ninth thing to look at is going to be educational facilities. So look at schools, evaluate the quality and proximity of public and private schools. And good schools are always essential for families with children and can impact the property values. Higher education, look to see if there's colleges, universities, how close those institutions are as well. And these can provide opportunities for lifelong learning and professional development for your kids or maybe for you. And maybe if you're gonna be going back to school or you wanna be around the university, maybe your spouse is going to school or doing their master's or doctor's program and you guys are able to afford a home and also go into school as well at the same time. Usually I don't see it that way. Usually most people I'm working with they're not in school anymore, but I have ran into some situations where one of the spouses is maybe uh, going to get their master's and uh, you know they're looking to buy a house. That happens sometimes. And then the 10th thing to look at, the final thing is gonna be just health and wellness. So just look at how close health services are and fitness opportunities. A lot of these master plan communities are going to come with a fitness center, but some of them don't. All right, so like I think Star Trail over in Prosper doesn't have a fitness center within it, or maybe their new amenity center does. I'm not, I'm not too sure. They have a new pickleball court and tennis courts and those types of like outdoor activities, basketball courts, but uh, you might not have a fitness center. You might wanna be close to a Lifetime Fitness, an LA Fitness, a 24-hour fitness, a Gold's Gym. Uh, you might also wanna be close to the hospital systems as well. So just make sure you're looking at how close those health and wellness areas are to the master plan community and that's gonna wrap it up. So those are the top 10 things that I think you should be looking at. If you guys have any questions about buying in a master plan community, I am a licensed real estate agent. Would love to work with you and your family on your home search. I have all my contact information down below. Other than that, peace out y'all and take it easy as always. Thanks for checking out my channel and watching that video. I got more videos floating around here. If you're in the market to buy or sell real estate in the DFW area, contact me, Daniel, at the Home Expert team. I will be happy to answer any of your questions. Uh, besides that, uh, bye.